Hi guys, it's Kristen of Kristen's Art Cart. And today I have for you this friendly frog. And I invite you to draw him and paint him with me. This is a great lesson for students age five and up. If you are five or six or seven, if you're in kindergarten or first grade, you may need a little help from a grown up. Um, remember, you can always press pause and erase and fix things. Uh, work at your own pace, no matter how old you are. You can always rewind to hear an instruction again or um, to erase, to, to uh, do whatever you need to do. Just take your time and do the best that you can. If you would like to do this friendly little springtime frog with me, you will need the following. You will need paint paper, of course, some type of watercolor paper or paint paper, something sturdy enough to stand up to the paint. Of course, we'll need a pencil and eraser to draw him. I love Sharpies to add details. Um, I love to use a good liquidy paint when I'm painting on paper. And there's nothing more liquidy than tempera paint, good old school paint, whether it's Craftsmart or uh, Crayola, whatever the brand, a nice liquidy tempera paint. Water jar, of course. I have two brushes. The right brush for the job can make all the difference in the world. So I have a little brush for the little detail parts of my job and a bigger brush for the rest. And of course, you know how I love paper towels to help keep everything uh, from getting too messy. So you can put your paint on a paint palette. I like to wrap mine with press and seal. You can use wax paper or a paper plate. That's about all that you're gonna need. If you would like to do this with me, we're gonna begin by drawing. And I'm going to draw with a Sharpie so that you can really see what I'm doing. If you want to add Sharpie, you're going to do that later. First, you wanna draw with pencil. And then you can go back after your paint dries and add the uh, Sharpie. Uh, the reason I say this is if you start with the Sharpie now and then you immediately paint on it with a watery paint, that Sharpie just may, you know, mix in and, and turn your paint gray and black and you wouldn't want that. So you want to draw with pencil first. I'm going to draw with a Sharpie just so that you can see what I'm doing. Okay, you ready? We're going to I draw, you draw. And that is what I call my guided drawing lessons simply because I draw one step, you draw it. I draw the next step, you draw it and so on. So, to draw our friendly frog, we're gonna start here, I'm gonna get a little closer to you, in the top part of our picture, don't go too high, because remember we need to have um, that little fly up there, so make, leave room, you know, when leave room, maybe like right here, somewhere a little bit north of the middle, right about here, and we're gonna draw two circles, about the size of like a dime or a nickel, okay, so, Big circle like that. Almost like two nickels or two dimes. And then a little line connecting them. And then another little line on each side. Almost looks like a pair of glasses with the legs stretched out. And now we're gonna curve it down a little, curve it down a little. And now watch this first. You're gonna curve it down, curve it down, and have the two meet at the bottom to make his big, wide, froggy face. We're gonna give him a big, froggy smile because he's a friendly frog, right? And a little line on each side, give his little cheek lines to show his big deep smile. Two teeny little dashes for his little froggy nose. Now our frog is looking up into the sky because there's something delicious flying around up there that he's got his eye on. So we got to put our little eye marks like this, little eye circles. This will be painted in when we paint. Now to begin his body, we're gonna start with his shoulders and his arms. So we're gonna curve down, curve down. We have his shoulders and his arms. Okay, then we'll complete the arms with another little line like that and another little line like that. Little froggy legs, I guess they're legs, right? Not arms, little froggy front legs. 
and his little froggy toes, they have those little webbed toes. So you just go out, in, out, in, out, in, to the side, to the middle, to the side. There we have his little froggy toes. See? His little froggy belly is just a little line curved in the middle there. Now we're going to put his big back legs. He's got those crazy big back legs frog legs, long for jumping. So you're going to go up and down like that, up and down like that on each side, looking like he's ready to just jump off that lily pad. And then his little back toes, out, in, out, in. Now that one's sort of behind there, so we're going to make sure that front toe is in front. Out, in, out, in, out, in. And there we have our little froggy sitting like he's ready to go. Everybody can see him. Now we have to give him something to sit on. So we're going to make a lily pad. On each side, I'm going to go out a little bit and out a little bit. And then I'm just going to curve it down, curve it down, bump, 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 bump. And there we have our bumpy little lily pad that he's sitting on to float in his pond. I'm gonna put a little line on each side to show that there's pond that he's floating in. And those are the only details we need to draw. The rest of our picture is going to be done with paint. So you take your time, get your drawing the way you want it to be and set up your paint and I'll be right back to paint him with you. All right, you guys ready to paint? All right, if you look at our froggy painting, you will notice that we have two shades of green going on here and we have two shades of blue. So in order to make those distinguishable, you know, that we can tell one green item from the other, we can tell what is the green that's the frog and what is the green that's the lily pad, what is the blue that's the water and what is the blue that's the sky, we're gonna do some blending to create different shades, pretty shades of green and blue. So for my frog, I chose to mix my green with white to make a creamy, uh, pretty little green for my frog. And I'll show you how you can do that. I'm gonna make the screen come down like this and you can see my frog all ready to go on here. And then I'm gonna show you how we can, I'm gonna wet my brush. You always wanna wet your brush first and then give it a little squeeze. We don't want it to be wet we just don't want it to be dry. And you can see my paint is here. Now I'm gonna scoop a little green and put it in the middle here. And I'm not even gonna clean my brush. I'm just gonna scoop a little white and I'm gonna mix the two together. And maybe that's even too light. Here's some more green. Let's mix it in there and get a pretty, ooh, I like that, pretty creamy green. And I'm going to paint my frog this pretty creamy green. You can make your frog whatever shade of green you want. You can blend on the palette as I did there. What's funny is we don't have to worry about going in the lines there. His head and his body are the same shade, right? So you can just go and paint his entire body like that. You can blend on the palette as I just showed you. You can also, I'm gonna get a little more green here. You can also blend on your picture, whether it's a canvas or a piece of paper. Look, I can take some green and blend it into that green that I have going on right on the picture. You can blend your paint right there. I love that effect because it's often streakier a lot more obviously blended, which I always think is pretty. It's kind of creamy and streaky, which I always think looks pretty. So I'm gonna take my time and paint around my little froggy face. I'm just gonna keep adding green to it and blend right on the picture. Now for paint to blend, it has to be wet all the colors that you expect to blend together need to be wet. That's how it blends well. And paint 
on paper dries pretty quick. So like down here, I'm not sure how well this, yeah, it's still blending pretty decent. I'm going to use this green and do the same thing. I'm going to try to take this creamy green that I had already there and mix with it and bring it over to the rest of the frog. I'm not going back to the palette. I'm using the same paint that's on his tummy and spreading it over. Sometimes I do this. I take my brush and I spin it and it gets all that extra paint that's squished up in the top of the brush off and then you can use it. I'm going to go around his little toes. Now here's a situation where I might want to pause for a second and get my other brush because I have these little details like his little toes. It always pays to take your time and use the brush that you really want to use. It's worth it. Sometimes you don't want to stop and you think, oh, I'll just keep using this same brush and it won't hurt. And then the next thing you know, you've gone out of the lines or you've painted something the wrong color. Always pays to stop and take your time and get the brush that you really need to be using for a skinny little frog toe rather than trying to use this big brush. See how I'm using this paint over here? especially when you're painting on paper. You need to be careful not to use too much paint because it can make your paper really wrinkle. Sometimes it can even make your paper tear. We don't want that to happen, right? So we have one side of our frog done. I'm gonna let that guy hang out in the water and I'm gonna see if I can't get this other side of the froggy painted. I love this pretty creamy green. You can see how the pencil lines are still visible, but they are a little muted. Uh, they're a little lighter, a little less visible. Spin in that, and I'm going to switch to my smaller brush. So that's why when this dries, it might be a nice idea to go over the, the drawing lines with a Sharpie to help make them pop, to help make them uh, more distinguishable again. So you can see it also gives it a, a fun like illustrator look, like it's uh, an illustration in a book whenever you outline, I think. There, we have all the green of our frog done. Isn't he sweet? He's so cute. What a pretty color. A pretty creamy green for our fun little friendly frog. Now for the lily pad, I want to use a different green. I think I'm going to use a more yellowy green. So I'm going to take, here's a, a fun little tip about blending. If you're trying to make something lighter, say you want to make light blue, I would start with the white and add blue to the white until you get the color you want. If you start with the darker color, you may add so much more white in order to get that same shade. So what I'm saying is I want light green. I'm going to start with yellow. And I'm going to add green to the yellow. Ooh, I like that color already. So I got this fun little light green. And I'm going to paint my lily pad. It's such a different green. I love that. They're both light and very pretty, but they're very different. That's what I wanted. There, I'm spinning my brush in order to get the paint out. See if I can go around those little toes with my big brush. Right, and now it's probably time to be smart and switch to that smaller brush. So I can get in these little areas like this, go around this little toe and this little toe. Go around the bottom of the little lily pad.
Almost there. I like these little lines that are being created by this smaller brush. Small paintbrush, small paint strokes, you know, small brush strokes. And that's what's giving us these fun little lines, which I kind of like. I think I'm going to add some more to maybe really emphasize that this is a little lily pad. Give it some little lily pad looking leaf wrinkles. And here we have our little lily pad that our froggy is sitting on. I'm going to paint the sky next because I want the sky to dry and it will because it dries pretty quick. This paint dries pretty quick. Um, and that way I can paint the water. So to do the sky, I want it to be a nice light blue. I want it to be daytime. Uh, a time when there would definitely be uh, flies flying around in the sky for our friendly little frog. So I'm going to add a little bit of blue to this white to create a pretty light blue for the sky. Remember, we have to do the same thing with our blues. We need to make them different. We had two greens for the frog and the leaf. Now we're gonna have two blues for the sky and the water. Now I'm gonna go around my frog very slowly and carefully. You may even wanna to switch to your little brush, but before that outline dries, smooth it into the sky. So I'll tell you what, if you outline the whole frog first, the outline could dry and then never really blend very well with the background. And that can be kind of distracting. You might not like it if you can see your outline. I'm gonna go around his little eyes, which I've left to paint, right? Did you notice that? I'll tell you why. There's a very good reason why. I like to add black to my paintings last whenever possible. Once you add that black paint, as many of you already know, black paint is beautiful and it's so strong, but then it just sits there and it waits for you to come by with white or light green or light blue. And then it smears into it and drives you crazy. We don't want that to happen. So I'm going to wait to add the black, even though, oh my goodness, you want to put the black in his eyes because you feel like that's going to make him complete. We always look at the eyes first, almost anything. Um, but I'm going to wait because I know I'll be glad that I did. I know that if that eye had fresh black paint on it right now, it might be blending in with this baby blue and making me go crazy. And nobody wants to go crazy, not when they're painting. So I'm wondering if I'm gonna have enough paint to finish this. I think I am. I'm gonna go down in here between the top part and bottom part of his leg. Around his little cheek the top part of his leg. Oh my goodness, we're almost there. Now, see how you would think, oh, you need more paint, but you don't. Going around that leg. What a beautiful sky. Looks just like the sky blue crayon color. That was always my favorite crayon when I was growing up. There we go. Beautiful little blue sky behind our sweet little frog. And now to do the water, I'm going to choose a darker blue for the water, but I still need a little more white. Let's try this one. What's going on with my white? 
I'll get it to come out. There we go. All right, now I'm going to show you why I used a little bit of white. Even though my water is a little darker, I'll show you why. First, I'm going to start with the dark blue paint. And as always, I'm going to go around that little lily pad, right? We don't want to make the water cover up the pretty little wrinkles and folds and bumps of our lily pad. So I'm going to go around the lily pad so I don't run into it when I paint. And now I'll show you what I'm going to do across. Horizontal strokes are going to help us think this is water. If you've looked out across the pond or out across the lake, if you've ever been to a park, if you've ever been to a pond or a lake and you look out across the water, often it looks like there's lines going across the light of the sun or the light of the moon reflect across the water. So these horizontal brush strokes, after we outline, are going to help us know it's water, that the light is going across. And it helps because it's a different direction than the sky. The sky was kind of up and down and all over, and the water is definitely going side to side, side to side. That along with the fact that it's a different shade of blue helps us understand where the sky ended and the water began. Especially if your lily pad and your frog are a little smaller and you have a lot more water on each side, it's even more important. So there we have the blue water. And I'll show you a fun thing you can do with the white. You don't even have to clean your brush, just kind of smush it off on the paper towel. Get a little bit of that white. And if you go, and just streak a little. Look, I'm not getting any more. You don't need much. Just kind of streak that white on. It's going to look like water. It's going to look like light on the water. Ooh, how pretty. Now we have like light reflecting and it looks even more like water. There we go. Now, if you would like, you can paint his little eyes black. This other little eye, black. Now we have to give him his little fly that he's looking at. What's he looking at up in the sky? And here's how you're going to start it. Get your little brush, get it good and clean. Get all the paint off of it. Go like this on paper towel. Make sure there's no color left on it. And then you're going to go up in that sky and you're going to get a little bit of white paint and you're going to put Hopefully your sky is dry. If your sky is not dry, you might want to wait until it's dry. Up here above him, because he's looking at it, you're going to put two little circles or two little ovals with white. And you're going to let that dry, okay? I'm going to go ahead and do it, but you might want to really make sure you let that dry because you want a little black fly, not a little gray fly. And you're going to give him a little black body in between. And then using your Sharpie after the paint dries or with your little paintbrush, your little teeny paintbrush, you're going to put little tiny uh, dashes or dots to show that the fly is flying. Boop, 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 boop. Maybe he did a little loop-de-loop -loop when he flew across the sky. And when the paint dries, you can add Sharpie if you like. You can say, hey, I don't need any Sharpie. I can see my lines well enough and that's fine. Or if you like, you can add the Sharpie to outline the frog. Maybe you could even use Sharpie and add some little details like lines on your lily pad. You want to sign your work. Artist always signs his or her work. And put the date, if you like, or at least the year. And there you have a happy little 
friendly springtime frog. Thank you so much for doing this lesson with me. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, feel free to like and share and subscribe. And I'll see you next time. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Bye-bye.